now we just heard a lot of information. So we're going to start, let's see, where's the video right here? Okay, so, so it's, on, it's on to for you guys, okay? And so we definitely want to start off with Jeremy, okay? And, and we've heard a lot around uh, career technical education, the need for us to focus more on science, technology, engineering, and math, and different kinds of classrooms. Jeff, we're going to open it up uh, for your comments and take it from there. All right, thank, thank you. Uh, this is uh, what collaborative teams are all about. Andrew's taking care of you. Thank you, I do want to, uh, you know, if you don't mind, circle back to a comment from the from the last team. You know, I think I think there's an interesting thread that I'd, I'd like to make sure we don't lose here, and that's, you know, the comments that Secretary Christo made, the comments that Andrea made about uh, what's happening with regards to our, particularly our rural communities, because you know, if you look at the examples from an economic development standpoint, we're talking about major industry moving into metropolitan areas, right? So the, those that have get more, right? So it, it, it elevates the strength of the community colleges in that area. It elevates the strength of the school system in that area with tax base growth and those sorts of things. So uh, I think one of the things I want to make sure we don't lose is how do we elevate the quality of teaching in the areas that aren't attracting those businesses so that we can attract those businesses. You know, we can't wait for the plant to decide to go there out of the good of their hearts, you know, hoping that a workforce is available. We've got to create one that attracts the business to the end. And then we can break that cycle of companies that, that, that are happening. Northeastern North Carolina, areas of West Carolina, are a prime example of, you know, of, of that problem. So we've got to, we've got to start to look at that. And I think our educational system is really where we start get it fixed and get it producing kids. Initially, they'll have to move away. We get that. Eventually, they won't have to move away. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to comment on that, I think one of the things that North Carolina has over pretty much everywhere else is a, is a great uh, internet infrastructure across the state. And so in the same way that the interstate highway system sort of opened up rural areas if you wanted to get there, we now are, are opening up information highways. And so there isn't nearly as much uh, isolation in the rural areas as there used to be. And so having access to, you know, you've got the Library of Congress at your fingertips, literally, and, you know, with your cell phone, with your AT&T library. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what that means is that, that those huge disadvantages that, that used to be there because you couldn't get to the Museum of Art because it was 200 miles away, well, maybe you still can't get there, but you can certainly look at pictures of it. And so I think, uh, having that kind of information access opens up the possibilities of the, the kinds of instruction that I was talking about um, that uh, will greatly reduce the disadvantage of being a starting member order. When I talk about the, uh, stories from school, I still am amazed at this. When I was a senior in high school, I thought an engineer drove trains. Mm -hmm. Well, but maybe a, <laughs> an observation in, in response. And then I'd like to make a, you know, another observation about the, the, the last uh, set of comment or, or content. You know, an, an observed difference, for example, of going to an early college high school here in Wake County that has number one laptops, right? So the kids can explore and they can bring content in the classroom versus an early college high school in Denver County that had three computers for the school. That's what I'm talking about. So not all kids walk in with the iPad. Not all kids have the luxury of the iPad. We have to do that. You know, at some point, we've got to invest. And these poor school districts, they, they just don't have the tax base to do this. So we've got to find a way in this connection to make sure. This has to be a technology-rich environment because that's the environment that the business community offers. You know, that the, if your job can be replaced by an iPod, it, it will be. That is, that is the world, so you have to be better than that as you go. Yeah, I, I, the other thing that I would just be interested in a little more comment on is in the career and technical education side of the equation, I, I thought it was a great comment about the, you know, kind of the former bifurcation where you either went to college, that's the way it was when I went to school, you were either on college track or you were on the, you know, the trades track and never the two shall meet. I would have loved to have taken the bricklay when I was in college. It might have helped my, my landscaping <laughs> when I was in high school. How do we 
I guess one of the questions is how do we create those experiences for kids that maybe are college bound, but they get yeah. that opportunity to see that I, you know, if you think about some of the science questions, you know, what you're doing about, you know, heat into a, a, a block of a room. You know, how do you get kids to have that experience so they connect the physical with the intellectual that they can use you know, in a variety of ways? You know, I, you know, we see it in our industry all the time. All of our applicants for things like alignment in the power industry. About 80% of the, of the applicants for those jobs which require a high school education cannot pass a simple construction and steel trades uh, aptitude exam. They can't pass it because all it is is simple <coughs> applied math and simple uh, you know, capabilities to do problem solving. So how do we change that fundamentally in the schools? So there are a couple of things that come quickly to mind. Um, one, of, one of them goes back to a very fundamental how do you plan to be in high school? As a student, what is your plan for high school? Um, and I think in that planning and coaching students, we have to be very explicit about um, these things connect. The other thing, and I should have said it as I was going through the program areas, those seven technical areas are not the same seven areas that existed when you were in school. The names are the same, but the things they learn are different. Um, there's some real quick examples of that. Um, in agriculture, even when I came through high school, and I, I, I'm young, y'all can give me that. Um, uh, production agriculture was a big push. We were, teachers were teaching students how to grow crops, and that was important, um, especially coming from a rural county. Today, in North Carolina, there are but a handful of schools that still offer production agriculture. Now they're teaching biotechnology, or they're teaching advanced horticulture and nursery operations. So we're, we're, we're marketing and we're helping coach students to make those connections. The other piece of that plan that I think is critical is that in that scope and sequence of courses, we made very distinct alignments between the academic science and math that supports the technical skill. So if you want to be a um, biotechnical engineer, we want you taking agriculture and biotech because you need to know what it's like to be in a lab and to do that research. But you also need to have advanced biology. You need to make sure you can get through um, pre-calculus or calculus while you're there. So we know that that work needs to continue, but we're actively seeking partners to help us bring those together and do that coaching. Okay, uh, let's see, uh, Steve. We're going to have growth of about 10 or 12 percent in the southeast region in those STEM heavy uh, occupations. We're concerned on whether we'll have the folks to fill uh, those positions that will have the skills and the education to do that. Nevertheless, it's going to be some job creation uh, in that area. So I think one of the things we're seeing, I'd like for uh, both of you all to comment on, if you would, is uh, what's the pathway to having more STEM related initiatives at the local level in these rural areas that Jeff uh, mentioned and kind of what is the integration marriage possibility with STEM and CTE? CTE is, is quite um, optimistic about how we're going to play the STEM arena. Um, not by ourselves, but with many, many partners. Um, in terms of how it starts, I would say it starts probably I talk about grade 6, 12, um, because that's our primary customer base. But we really need to talk about career development that starts in elementary school. Um, specifically in, in STEM, one of the real exciting things is to see elementary students that are involved in inquiry-based science around problems that are, they are really looking for solutions. And, and you really give them a package of how to solve the problem, where you read, where do you go to find the information and use the technology to, to do those answers? The other part of that for CTE in particular is um, we, we need to <coughs> further develop a mechanism for industry to guide us to real particular places with it. Um, and it's going to look different. So you, you may in your region have companies that are doing work that need a certain skill set around um, advanced manufacturing in for or in the 
research or in, in development. And a district in the West may have similar but different needs. Um, we are very anxious to find a skill set that we can start students at with a very transferable, um, around STEM in particular, transferable skills that can give them the base and then fine tune courses that, that give the specificity that the local area needs. Um, and that's just hard work. It's a heavy lift for us. That I think is a really important point. Uh, several of us are on the Jobs Commission, and in fact, we visited all over the state. And one of the things that struck me from that is that when we, you know, the, the, one of the purposes was find out what uh, education at all levels could provide the region, each of the seven economic regions, that would advance the economy in that region. And what I found interesting was that it was all the same. It was things like problem solving, critical thinking, communication, uh, that sort of that sort of thing. And what was interesting though was that each area had its own specific application. So it might be language arts in the military area, it might be uh, finance over in, uh, in Charlotte, it might be tourism down in Wilmington or whatever it happened to be. But uh, they all sort of focused to the same key skills. And so I think that's what we need to do is, is have more cooperation between businesses and the schools to find out what is it that you want uh, new graduates to have, people that you're going to be hiring to have, make them more useful for you. A lot of the things that schools can provide, it's difficult for businesses to do. Teaching things like, you know, cooperative groups and how you work in a team takes multiple people. You can't sit in a cubicle and read about that. You need to work with people to do that. And businesses don't want to take the time. Now they can they can hand you know hand the new employee a, a notebook saying here's here's all the proprietary information that wasn't out there anyway, you know about that you need to know. So learn this. But things like you know critical thinking and teamsmanship and communication skills you have to be able to communicate to somebody. So you have to practice those skills and learn those skills in a in a place with lots of people. And schools are ideal for that if you're <coughs> set up to do that. Thank you. Uh, okay. Going back to the scale up model and even Mr. Malik's classroom. Can you, can you comment on what is being taught in the Colleges of Education? We um, sound like New Schools Project is going to do a, a great job with the coaching of and a huge transformation with the existing teachers. But what is what is being done? What is the state of the practice in the Colleges of Education? Are these the new? Well, in, what? in fact, uh, a new course we just started this semester is being taught at NC State in one of our scale classrooms for elementary science teachers, and it's taught in a scale up mode, and but it's teaching them content. Because the idea is that people tend to teach, and I'm sure you've heard this, people tend to teach as they have been taught. And so the, the students in that classroom are future teachers, and they are you know, struggling and asking each other questions and making measurements and stretching their heads and, and thinking about things and eventually learning the content. And so we're hoping that they will then take that practice into their own classrooms to get their own students through that. So people are recognizing that, that, that more of that needs to be done. I, I actually want to bring, uh, thank you, I want to uh, key in uh, on my second question that we started out with uh, this morning, just have a little discussion about how do we balance uh, what we're doing with career and technical education. Um, and I, I know one of the concerns, frankly, that I have as a parent is to make sure that my children don't get uh, so focused or that no one, no counselor puts them on some path that will put them in a position where they can't end up going to a four-year college or, or it's so narrow that they lose some of the broader uh, skills that I think they need to have. And, and I won't get into it, but I actually had an example with my son where if we had chosen that path for him, he would not have actually been able to end up at the college that he ended up now because of the curriculum and the classes. And, and I actually think that's somewhat problematic. So I don't want to start up too much, but. Let's talk about that. <laughs> I think we can, we can narrow some kids right out of an advanced education. Well, there are a couple of comments I'll make in, in general and then come back to, to something I've already said. Um, beginning in um, next school year, we will have our first graduates that come out of high school under the Future Ready Corps. And so when we go back to looking at, at the two very distinct roads, one that was college and one that was career, there was a place in time where the math rigor was different depending on which of those you, I'm going to use the word for argument's sake, got locked into. The Future Ready Corps levels that field. The 
because it says that all students should have at least algebra two when they finish high school, which is the four-year university admission standard. And so I think that's an important thing to remember. But, but as we work with students, we want to make sure that, that we help them plan. And I realize, you know, I realize we're talking about 14 year olds. I haven't had a classroom so long, I don't remember what, and I live with two. But I don't remember what they're like. We know they're going to change their mind. Um, and frankly, we would rather them do that exploration in high school than in college <laughs> or after they graduate. We want them to have those very rich experiences with, without feeling trapped that they don't have a choice. But we also know that there's a benefit to students consuming, in particular, CTE courses that are related to a cluster or an industry. Because we've identified, with some help of some national partners, the knowledge and skill set that students need along that path. We know they need to be able to do these particular things if they're interested in this career. And if they don't like that one, then jump into another cluster that may be of interest to them. But that planning is an important piece, and, and again, I think the rigor for all students is important to know as we move forward. And, and being, students not feel like they have to trade off. The final point I'll make is that the career and college promise also fits very well when we talk about um, students being successful. When we think about using the community college as a very strategic partner, and so that students will have technical foundational knowledge from the high school CTE courses, they get even more technical and more specified at the community college level. Or if they are intent on a bachelor's and know that from the beginning, then they can go ahead and consume those college transfer courses while they're in high school and be more ready for that. Thank you. Okay, let's wrap it up here with Bob Gibson. Gosh, I had a question. Okay. So as, as a former chairman of the board of East Carolina, um, I'm interested in whether, because it wasn't happening when I was here, um, if teachers are being taught in college in an inquiry-based mode, or are they just being taught pedagogy and have it deliver the message? Actually, there was a, a PhD dissertation in science ed that was just completed two years ago uh, at NC State that looked at uh, what kinds of training teach, pre-service pre teachers had and then what they did during student teaching, then what they did during the first year or two of teaching, then after five years, and what they found is it started up lots of great role modeling, lots of instruction, pedagogy, lots of practice. They did some of that in their student teaching, they did a little bit of that in their first year of teaching, and after five years, they were doing hardly anything for based instruction because of the pressures. Okay, and we are going to wrap this up and start our next discussion off with you. We always have to leave one hand. Thank you very much for joining us.